you all would agree that there are consequences for our actions, that there are things that we do, whether we are either unbelievers or actual believers, that there are still consequences for the things we do. There are positive consequences and there are negative. Well, there's a passage in the Bible that is not as clear as we would like it to be. And so for that reason, there are times where you just have to say, you know, this is what I think it means, but I cannot be totally sure. And you will see different scholars and theologians go back and forth in terms of what this passage means. And that is the passage in 1 John 5, 16 that speaks about a sin that leads to death as well as a sin that does not lead to death. And so people have asked this question. So let's go ahead and jump into it and see if we can kind of get some sort of understanding as to what John is actually talking about. So in 1 John 5, 16, it says, if anyone sees his brother committing a sin, not leading to death, he shall ask God or pray to God and God will give him life to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. There is a sin or I'm sorry, there is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. And I had to correct myself because I said there is a sin and it's not to be taken as a sin as one particular sin. It doesn't seem like Again, this is my my take on it. It doesn't seem like there is a particular sin that John is in reference that John's referencing. Just that there is a sin or sin or sins plural that a person can be involved in, engaged in that could lead to God just giving a quick judgment and taking that person out. Some sins you would see that that will probably look even obvious, and we're going to reference a particular passage, an example that might be an example of this, but just in our own understanding, if a person goes out and decides to rob a bank and then takes a gun and there's a shootout, well, guess what? That is a sin <laughs> that is probably, or is a good chance, leading to death. If you decide you want to rob your local police station, that might be a sin that's going to lead to death. And that, I think, might be what he's speaking about. I don't think that he's speaking of spiritual death. Here's why. Let's go ahead and read again. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall pray to ask God and God will give to him. Now, the word God is not actually there, but we know who he's referenced to. It says he will give him life to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. So the person who is committing a sin and this sin doesn't lead to death. Now, the problem is he doesn't indicate what these sins are. Could it be a lie? Well, typically lying does not lead to death, but maybe through some sort of foresight that you have, some sort of understanding, you just see this person, you've seen people that are on their way down, they're on a slippery slope, and you see the end result might be uh, prison time for some people, or it may just be death. Someone is engaged in, let's say, um, heavy drug abuse and you know where it's going on, or they are out robbing people to, to um, stay up with their drug abuse, their, their drug addiction. You can see that ultimately ending in death. And so the Bible doesn't even tell us if on this next passage, if this is something that is a swift death or not, it just says lead to death. It says, uh, there is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. Now on that part, he's not saying to not pray for someone He's just saying, I'm not telling you to pray for that person. There are times where, you know what, praying for the person might be, uh, he's going to have to learn his lesson. I'm not saying that's what he's getting at. It could be. But again, he's not totally clear on this. But let's see what we can glean from this uh, for certainty. He says, there is a sin that leads to death. There is sin. Now, Again, it doesn't tell us if this is one sin, a sin, or just sins. And I believe the, 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 the correct way to look at this is that there is sin, different sins, although it's not explained. He says, I do not say pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that leads to death. So obviously, this is why we say that he's probably speaking of different types of sin, because it says all wrongdoing is sin, and he's including all sin, anything that we do. That's categorized as sin, and there is a type, there is sin that leads to death. Speaking of this, all of the wrongdoing. And look at verse 18. He says, we know everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God, he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. This is why I believe that a person who is a believer 
can commit a sin and then pay the ultimate price. Well, I wouldn't say the ultimate price. The ultimate price would be loss of salvation, right? But we clear that's not what's happening here. They can pay their life as the ultimate price here. They can pay that price. And so uh, we're told here, look what it says, um, but he who was born of, of God, God protects him and the evil one does not touch him. So it cannot be this person is losing their salvation, right? So that cannot be it. Uh, then how is God protecting him? So by the way, this also is a passage that we use for someone who is saying that a person who is a believer can be possessed. Well, no, they can't be possessed if the Bible said that God protects that person. But going back to that passage, everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. So his point is that believers, actual believers, don't live a lifestyle of practice of sinning. Are you with me? Uh, there is no one who is a believer who I got to go sin. This is just what I do. Now, there might be a believer who might struggle with the sin, but they're trying to overcome that they are grieved by it. They, are, they have a repentant heart, which bothers them. But the other person who has this lifestyle of sinning, that's not who this person is talking about. A, a Christian, a believer, does not have this pattern or this lifestyle of sinning. As a matter of fact, we've seen passages, and we won't go into them now, that says that he who keeps sinning or the one that is doing sin or practice sinning is, John already told us, that person is not of God. Now, let me give you a passage that might help to shed some light on this. In Acts 5, 1, we read about Ananias and Sapphira who sold some property with his wife, verse 2, with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the feet of the apostles. Now, the question is, one, were these believers, because that comes up often, is this an example of someone who was a Christian who also lost their salvation as a result of this. Well, one, we know this. This was clearly a sin that led to death. You are lying to God, and there was no need to do so. But the one issue that needs we need to go ahead and address is, one, were they believers? We have no idea. We have, there's no way to know that this is, act, that Ananias or his wife were. Uh, they were among the group of believers, but let's be clear. Everybody in that group, everybody in that audience, all of the folks that called themselves believers in the first at the first uh, uh, century church or the founding of the church, they weren't all Christians. Jesus is clear. Paul is clear, especially that not all of those who call themselves are believers. And Paul says to examine themselves. And so we cannot assume that Ananias and Sapphira were actual believers. Clearly, their sin led to death. But let's just say they were believers. We don't know what happened to them once they died. Again, a believer, according to 1 John 5, there is a sin that would lead to death, but we're not speaking about a spiritual death because the Bible just told us, or we just read, where God will protect him. And so uh, this is an example, I believe, of probably, I would, if you ask me, do I believe that they were Christian? I'd probably say they were believers. I'd go ahead and give them the benefit of the doubt. And if they were, because of other passages that we've read, where Jesus says it's literally impossible if they were, that they could have perished. Now, do Christians commit sin? They do. Uh, we're told that, as a matter of fact, by John, that if anyone says he does not sin, then what is he? He is a liar. So Christians do commit sin. And can a Christian commit a sin that I believe would lead to death? I think this is an example, but it doesn't say that they went to hell. You can die. Again, every Christian that has ever lived, Every Christian that has ever lived, who took their life? God did. So at some point in time, God is going to take the life of the believer. And it would not come as a surprise that if that Christian who happens to also sin from time to time, who might commit a sin, if God took that opportunity to take their life, that's in keeping with, with, with what God does. Uh, it might be that God has decided that, you know what, <laughs> maybe your usefulness has run out. But, uh, I believe that's the whole point of that passage in 1 John 5, that there is a sin that leads to death. It could be a sin. We don't know what it is, that this particular sin, it varies, uh, could cause God to just give an ultimate judgment for the sake of the rest of the body. Because when the body sees a believer sinning and then taking that, that believer's life, what does that do? That would give the, <laughs> the, the body a wake-up call. So, Anyway, that's my take on it, my friends. If you disagree, I'd love to hear why. I'll give you examples. And so uh, if I'm wrong, could be. 
Could be. Again, scholars differ on this. You can look this up and you'll see people having different conclusions. I gave you mine. Uh, I'd love to hear what yours is. And if yours is different, well, then amen.